evening. I'm calling to order this meeting of the Arlington Select Board on Tuesday, October 17th. I am Select Board Chair Eric Helmuth. Tonight's being, meeting is being conducted in a hybrid format uh, as provided by the Massachusetts Legislature. Before we begin, please note the following. First, this meeting is being conducted in the Select Board Chambers and over Zoom. It is being recorded and simultaneously broadcast on ACMI. Second, people wishing to join the meeting by Zoom can find information on how to do so on the town's website. A persons participating by Zoom are reminded that you may be visible to others and that if you wish to participate, we'll ask you to provide your full name in the interest of developing a record of the meeting. However, tonight I do not anticipate opportunities for public comment. Third, all participants are advised that people may be listening who do not provide comment and those persons aren't required to identify themselves. Both Zoom participants and people watching on ACMI can follow the posted agenda materials found on the town's website, specifically the select board agendas and minutes page. Thank you very much. Thanks to my colleagues for making time for tonight's uh, additional meeting. I know in addition to our, our normal quick procedural vote that we take that accommodates the select board's uh, ability to, to gather with above reproach during town meeting, uh, we also had a couple of items of business. First item of business will be a public discussion uh, with my colleagues, and then following that, we will move to an executive session, um, at which time the broadcast will end. We, I will ask for a motion that will, uh, that will adjourn the entire meeting from executive session. Any comments, Mr. Uh, Attorney Hung? No, go? thank you, Mr. Chair. All right, thank you. Okay, so let's turn to item one, a review of the select board override commitments. Okay. So I have before you a suggestion for the board to vote tonight for, for, for two very small changes to the overrides, and I will explain the reason for them. But the substance of the change is really just for clarity, uh, suggesting that we might, for the title, delete the words FY24, uh, because that has always been a little bit ambiguous about whether we're, it's when we're going out for the override on the campaign and the election or whether or when it takes effect but with the developments I'm about to detail, it becomes even more ambiguous. Uh, and secondly, uh, just an update on, on the effective date, and I suggest the language, which open to, to edits, uh, reaffirming on today's date. Um, and as I will detail, everything else in the document, I think, is, does not need to be changed. So here are some informational remarks for the sake of my colleagues and for the public. I will be repeating these remarks uh, and anticipated tonight at town meeting pending a, a vote of finance committee uh, to happen at 730 that would uh, be a no action vote on article 2 which appropriates or would have appropriated um, some funds from the coming override to uh, fiscal year 24 for the schools. Earlier this month a typographical error was discovered on the ballot language for question 1 on November 7th as prepared under the direction of the town manager at the time and voted by the select board. Specifically, instead of specifying July 1st, 2023 to identify the fiscal year in which the override would take effect, it said 2024. As a result, the tax increase, if approved by voters, would take effect next July, not this winter and spring as originally planned. It also means that the town will ask voters for $7 million less between now and the end of fiscal year 26. When the error was discovered, the board had two options, to change the language and delay the election to some extent, or to proceed with the current language. After consulting with the town manager and his finance team, it became clear that we could proceed as is with the language as voted and still meet all the select board commitments to taxpayers for this override, maintaining level services in the town and schools making specific new investments, and most importantly, not asking for another override before fiscal 27 because we will still have a balanced budget through fiscal year 26. This course of action was made possible by two things. First, some very recent, positive, though likely one-time financial developments that the town manager will detail shortly. It was also made possible because of the town's conservative budgeting practices that are designed to withstand unexpected events. Although it is clear that the town very much needs the override funds starting in fiscal year 25, I am pleased to report that I am very comfortable with this course of action that is good news for taxpayer wallets 
but remains a responsible financial approach that protects the town's ability to continue providing outstanding town and school services to our residents and to ensure responsible budgeting and financial practices for our future. So tonight I invite discussion and, and uh, our town manager will elaborate on some of the details that I alluded to. One question I have for the board is with the board's uh, support, I would like to change the last bullet point of my remarks to say that I, instead of I am pleased to report for myself, that I'm pleased to report on the behalf of the select board that we are very comfortable with this course of action uh, as is. Um, but that's up to you. Um, so I think the two items on, the, on our agenda for us to decide tonight are, are these edits to the commitments document um, and whether you support that, uh, that change in my representation in, in the substance of all the remarks, honestly, on behalf of the board, because that's the only way I'm authorized to speak on your behalf. Um, so, uh, Mr. Feeney, I'd invite you to uh, make further uh, elaborations at this point. Sure. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chair. As you referenced, working with the finance team, we were able to update our financial plan based on newly, newly available information. And we did determine the town would, in fact, be in a position to meet your stated override commitments for fiscal years 24 through 26 within the confines of an override that did not take effect until next year. So as you folks are well aware, at this time of year, important figures come into focus for municipal finance. This includes our assessor's office honing in on our new growth, which exceeded our estimate. We also learn about school enrollment, which is still growing, but to a lesser extent than was conservatively and prudently forecasted. And we also have our free cash certified by the Department of Revenue. The town's free cash position was particularly strong. I believe we heard about that in detail at our last meeting from our comptroller, Ida Cody. Of course, we had a, wild, a milder winter than normal. Uh, you just jinxed us for this winter. Go ahead. <laughs> but we also benefited from other favorable, perhaps temporary, economic circumstances outside of our control. Ever-increasing interest rates yielded significant returns on our sizable interest-bearing accounts. And frankly, the tight labor market resulted in delays filling open positions, creating a salary surplus. So given these and uh, you know, a number of other circumstances, we were able to balance the long-range plan through fiscal year 26 should the ballot question pass on November 7th. And of course, this will defer consideration of a school department budget adjustment originally contemplated by Article 2, as the chair noted, until the spring annual town meeting, when of course we will be even further along in the current fiscal year. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. Feeney. Uh, one further note I would make, just by way of a technical explanation, when we learned about this, uh, it was uh, outside of the, or within the 35 days uh, of the election in which we could have met to change the ballot language, which we would have had to rescind our vote and delay the election to 35 days from that date. Um, and um, although, you know, it was, it was really down to the chair to decide whether to convene the board to do that. I think that I was comfortable making that decision um, based on the, uh, on the town manager and his team's uh, input. You know, need, needless to say, though, the power is still on the board that, you know, if the board would want to, to go down that other road, um, you know, we could, we could do that tonight. Um, that would not be my personal recommendation, but then I will leave it to board discussion and questions for either myself or the town manager. Mr. Dickens. So I'm fine with this, but I am curious as to what were the options, you know, and the, the financial impact of those options. I mean, uh, so, so for instance, where do we land I mean, um, in the five-year time period of the long-range plan with this current situation versus, I mean, what would have happened otherwise? Yeah, that's a, a very fair question. I'll answer the first part of that. Uh, you know, the options were to just proceed as it is, which means that the override wouldn't, collections wouldn't start, and it's basically collecting $7 million less than we would have over the three-year period. Um, and, um, or, or to, you know, rescind the vote, delay the collection, and, and, and correct the language that would have started, uh, restarted the override. I'll turn to uh, the town manager, though, to represent what the financial, the long-range plan impacts of that uh, options would have been. 
Sure, I think, <clears throat> thank you, Mr. Chair. And Mr. Diggins, as you refer to what we often call the out years of the long range plan, as you know, this discussion is predicated on an override passing and the commitment being to pursue no overrides before fiscal year 27. So when you folks originally contemplated these commitments in the amounts, we were indeed projecting a deficit in fiscal year 27 back in June of uh, about, but just shy of $17 million. At this point in time, given the ripple effects of some of the points that I outlined below, we are of course still showing a deficit in fiscal year 27, but that has in fact been reduced to just <coughs> over $15 million. So certainly there will be food for thought at a later date. Thank you. Mrs. Mahan. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, first, I'd like to uh, move approval of the revised select board override commitment sheet, statement. Um, second to your question, I appreciate, um, I think I saw all of our heads nodding that when you do address your remarks to town meeting that this is a course that the entire board, select board, um, agrees with. So I'd appreciate you relaying that unanimity. I said that word right. Um, and thirdly, what I, well, I have a third and a fourth. The fourth is easy. Um, from this point um, going forward, if um, we could either with a quarterly or fiscal year end or fiscal start of report um, get as close to an approximate amount of our override stabilization account. Um, I, I just think that's something should go forward in years anyways, just so you know, um, we're aware of it when we, when we speak with people on the street. Um, so, but I, I'd leave that to, and you know, perhaps Mr. DeCourcy can give some more guidance. When is the appropriate time? I'm not looking for every quarterly report. I wanna see what the, the approximate, but it's close to accurate override stabilization fund balance is. But whatever is the most physical, commonsensical time to do that, either at the beginning or the end. But I would like something um, between now and May 30th of next year. When, whenever the town manager and chair think it's appropriate, um, whatever report to include it, I'm not asking for a separate thing on that. And then the third part, um, I'm, very um, pleased that we're, you know, we have a solution. We're continuing forward. There's been a lot of work that has been put into this. Um, when I speak to people in the streets, I have hardly gotten anyone who has come back contradictory in terms of uh, our teachers and our paraprofessionals um, on the school side. Um, the rapid turnover that we seem to have, as well as um, the pay not even close to comparable or average, and, th and that needs to be corrected, as well as, and, and that's for our colleagues on the school committee to advocate more for and give details, but also on, on the same hand, um, the same on the town side, also same reflection on uh, department heads and what they need to do to provide their services in the future, as well as um, the pay in direct order of if you go by, I haven't done it against the town manager 12, which is a different list, but the 10 communities that we use for our union employees, um, public works, police and fire, um, are just as low, if not the lowest um, on that list. And that's something that I know we're all committed to. And we, we are kind of hindered on that because we are members of the select board. We're not the town manager and we're not town council and we're not the deputy town manager who's in negotiations. But um, I think moving forward like this gives me and my colleagues the best tools that we need to continue working on those um, and f finding solutions for those. And I think to pause and try to reset and redo um, wouldn't be beneficial to the town. So thank you. Sorry to be so verbose. Thank you, Mrs. Mahan. Um, Mr. Hurd. I'll second the motion. Um, 
and happy to support the revised commitments. Uh, we talked about this, I mean, my comments sort of echo what I said in the last meeting, is that going through the financial reports and seeing how well we're doing financially, and you know, there's certainly extenuating circumstances to our cash situation, but it shows great financial leadership. Again, gets a little, a little bit of a, a delay in the in the bank to to people's wallets, and you know allows uh, people to prepare for it for a couple of years. So I think that it's good that we're able to do this, and it is puts our residents in a better position. And I think it helps us convince voters, you know, on election day why we're why we need the the override and that you know we've done everything we could I think at the beginning of the process we put in our commitments that we wanted to show that we've exhausted all avenues to reduce spending and to make sure that we're operating on as lean a budget as we can while still providing the incredible services that the residents expect in the town and I think this whole situation notwithstanding the typo I think proves that that even with a typo we can we uh, we're able to salvage the situation so I'm happy to move forward with the revised commitments as presented thank you mr. Hurd. mr. de Corsi. thank you mr. chairman and um, I also support mrs. Mahan's motion and, and I want to thank you mr. chair for your leadership working with mr. Feeney and mr. McGee and the finance team to go through this and and, and take a look once once the issue was discovered and just mr. Feeney had mentioned the um, enrollment figures and and just just so the public's very clear the, the timing of this the, the enrollment figures that we look at are as of October 1 you don't get that information on October 1st it comes out later so this is truly a, a recent development the free cash certification from the Department of Revenue came at the end of September so again this isn't something that was known months ago and there wasn't any action this was very recent and and that assisted your analysis and, and, and Mr. Feeney's analysis and, and just as Mr. Hurd said, you take a look at it and, and you adjust and, and there's been excellent financial management and we've been able to take take a look at that. And from from the voters' perspective, as, as you said, in t instead of the additional seven million hitting on the February and the May bill, if the override is successful, it will not hit until beginning on the August 1 preliminary bill for fiscal 25, so it's deferred. So. Um, to my way of thinking, I think similar to what Mr. Hurd said, we all support supported the override, putting it on the ballot. There is now an even stronger argument for the override, given the deferral here that the, the, the funds won't be requested until the next fiscal year is successful. Um, in, by my way of thinking, an even stronger argument to, to, to uh, support this or even uh, showing of a greater need uh, beginning in fiscal 25. Thank you. Thank you, uh, thank you all. I think I'll, I'll add just a couple of further comments. Uh, first of all, I appreciate the board's support uh, for this and your thoughtful uh, remarks. And I agree wholeheartedly that this fundamentally, the, you know, the, the mistake is was a mistake, and we all wish that it hadn't happened. Uh, but I think that first of all, our, our budgeting approach was successful in being able to absorb this um, and, and paid off. The second thing I would say is, you know, to anyone who might say, well, you know, well, you'll have funny, good financial news every year, you don't need an override, I would say, first of all, that the economic history of, of municipal governance would say otherwise, um, but also that even if that were the case, you know, but when, when, the, when we put this override in front of voters, uh, it looked very much like we needed every dollar that we asked for. Um, and that had that been the case and had we proceeded with, with the originally planned uh, vote and language, uh, if we had uh, money, if we had surplus money that came uh, into being, we would do what we've always done, which is make the override last longer. So we have always um, dealt with surpluses responsibly by telling voters, hey, we won't come to you for at least three years. Sometimes it has been four, sometimes it's been five, sometimes it's been longer. Um, and I couldn't agree more with Mr. Hurd's uh, observation that you know, now we can honestly say to the public, I think with this decision, that we are looking at all options, we are managing the money as carefully as we can, and we are not coming to the public for any more money than we really responsibly believe that we need. Um, so I think that is that the discussion is a good outcome, um, and I appreciate it. Any further discussion from the board? So we have a motion uh, to uh, 
make the uh, edits that are also uh, uh, in the uh, select board's agenda, by the way, for the public that are watching it, um, and also to support uh, my representing my previous comments uh, on behalf of the board at some meeting by Mrs. Mahan, is seconded by Mr. Hurd. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous vote. At this point, our second item of business is an executive session, um, and uh, I will ask uh, Mrs. Mahan for a motion that will take us into executive session, adjourn us from an executive session, um, and also name the purpose of the executive session. Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd like to uh, make a motion to go into executive session to conduct strategy with respect to impending litigation. Um, I would also like to move that when we adjourn from executive session, we also will be adjourning the regularly scheduled select board meeting of October 17, 2023, and that the select board will reconvene its town meeting session starting tonight at 8 p.m., and we will run concurrent with the duration of the special town meeting and our adjournment for select board session at the special town me meeting will be concurrent or coincide with the final night adjournment of this year's special town meeting. Thank you. Do I have a second? Second. Attorney Cunningham. I just wanted to note, too, Mr. Chair, through you, that uh, to have this type of open discussion regarding litigation and open session would have a detrimental impact on litigation. Thank you, sir. Yeah, it's an important rationale for the executive session. Okay, so we have a vote for executive session uh, under the parameters outlined by Mrs. Mahan, a second by Mr. DeCourcy. All in favor? Roll call. Roll call. Sorry. Well done. Attorney Cunningham. Mrs. Mahan? Yes. Uh, Mr. Hurd? Yes. Mr. Diggins? Yes. Mr. DeCourcy? Yes. Mr. Helmuth? Yes. yes. We are in executive session.